Well, thank you, Raquel. It's my pleasure to, to be here and to give this short presentation on my studies of Iron Age pottery technology in Iberia. Thanks to these studies, we have been able to, to explore uh, issues until recently little considered in archaeology, such as uh, gender identities. That's why I think uh, it's so important to organize conferences like the, the TAC, in this case, with uh, next to my friend and colleague uh, Raquel Liceras, and include sessions like uh, the one we are at. The dissemination of these new approaches and the discussions they arose are essential, in my point of view. Well, let's start to, uh, talking about pottery. I love pottery very much. But why? Basically, because it's uh, the most common cultural element in archaeological sites. It's in almost indestructible material and it's connected uh, to the people in charge of its production and, and use. However, most of the studies carried out in archaeology on these materials have focused on the construction of a typological series based on formal and physical aspects, which only allow to make chronological axes, and now which specific potteries were produced and consumed in prehistory or, for example, in Roman times. In this slide, you can see three photographs of Iron Age potteries found in the Iberian Peninsula. If you study the, the pottery of the Iberian Peninsula, uh, you must now know that they are master fossils, uh, marking the association of particular uh, archaeological sites to chronological periods of the first or second Iron Age. It's true that with the advent of the, the processual limbs in the 60s, studies on potteries focused on more global aspects and technological analysis came into action. Numerous works are carried out that reconstruct the, for the first time the productive processes of potteries and they are asked new questions focused on fu functional aspects. <clears throat> but they are still seen in modern terms in connection to economy and the concept of time and progress. In this sense, pottery assemblage continues to be conceived as passive products only created to satisfy precise needs. In addition, their functional study has been used to justify and consolidate from their archaeological point of view the fundamental idea that drapes uh, our Western society, the technological advance as synonym of progress. According to this rule, the potteries that uh, were consumed in prehistory uh, were very simple. The Roman potteries were more advanced than the potteries of Iron Age, and of course, our table work, uh, the, 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 the pottery that we use now, consuming IKEA, for example, is the best that have ever been made in the history of humanity. It's hard to believe, but uh, it's, it's so. For all this, it's uh, worth asking ourselves if we really find the people in archaeological research or not. Sadly, I have to say, currently in very few research. We, the archaeologists, should reconstruct societies of the past and write about people, not about objects. For me, the most important. To find people in the potteries, we must change our focus and understand them beyond physical units. They are a set of ontological codes, ways of conceiving the world that belong to a specific social context. We must also assume that they are very close in the relationship between people objects and society, and that this interrelationship can be ascertained by implementing social technology studies using the French anthropological concept of chain operatoire. Through them, it's possible to carry out reconstruction of the productive processes in which the raw materials, the energy used, the tools, the gestures, and the specific knowledge matter. The latter related above all to learning processes and knowledge uh, transmission concept that uh, are essential. From this perspective, and taking into account, of course, the archaeological context, extra-archaeological information obtained through extra-archaeological studies or experimental archaeology, and putting into practice technological analysis focused on the social analysis of macro and micro traces that the potteries still preserve on their surface or in their sections, we can understand pottery assemblage as containers of cultural meaning. And therefore, this is the most important of this presentation, carry out archaeological studies that go beyond functional criteria and allow to ask potteries the following question. Who were the people who produced and used these potteries? Why did they produce and use them? And what for? The answer to this directly connect with social aspects such as identity, kinship, symbolism, and rituality, 
all of them directly or, indirect, or, or indirectly link to the knowledge of gender relations in archaeology. The practical application of all of this theoretical and methodological approach has been carried out in the pottery assemblage of two well-known and important Iron Age settlements from the northern plateau of the Iberian Peninsula. The first is Las Cogota settlement, located near the city of Avila. The technological study of the decorations made on the second Iron Age potteries found in each allow the distinguished negatives of index, index fingers and thumbs that could be measured. Specifically, the width uh, was measured and it was possible to assess intervals of size. The smaller negatives were always associated with handmade pottery sets, while the larger ones corresponded to thrown potteries. To ascertain whether these results were related to gender issues, we conducted an experimental study of 200 samples in which we measured the negative on the index fingers of modern child and adult Caucasian populations. Also, the intervals obtained in this experimental study tell us, of course, that the hands of the current population are larger than those of the people in the past. The difference ratios between adult male and female hands remain identical. So it would be possible to imagine with these results that in the second Iron Age, handmade pottery would be made by women and throw pottery by men. And it would also be possible to imagine that the potter's wheel would not be just a profitable tool used to make only more pottery pieces in the shortest possible time. The potter will a good be a social tool that would serve to make women invisible in a world that was increasingly hierarchical and controlled by men. In, that, in this case, maintenance activities, among which would be the production of, of pottery, carried out by women in domestic settings, would have less and less importance in granting the survival of the group. On the contrary, workshops dedicated exclu exclusively to the production of pottery on the potter's wheel would begin to emerge, presumably de directed by master artisan, in that case men, valued by the community for the knowledge and practical ability. In these heterarchical anthropocentric societies, this artisan would be on the top. Similar studies have also recently been carried out in Cerro San Vicente, aside from the first Iron Age located in Salamanca. The technological study of its pottery has provided uh, interpretation related to Iron Age connectivity and whether women play an important role in it. The, the discovery two uh, years ago of digital negatives of index made it possible to reconstruct the technical gesture applied in drying phase of the pottery of Cerro San Vicente. As can be observed today in some current industrial pottery context from the ethnological point of view, it seems that uh, the containers would be turned upside down to facilitate the drying process and avoid the appearance, for example, of cracks or surface breaks. Measurements of the width of these fingerprints show very small intervals and were similar to those found on handmade pottery from Las Cogotas hundreds of years later. In this sense, women could be in charge of controlling pottery production process, as they are still conceived at this time as maintenance activity more linked to the domestic sphere. We are speaking and, and, and talking about the first Iron Age. And why we know that? No. We know this because tools used to perform certain gestures linked to pottery production processes have been documented in domestic areas, that, in that case, houses of Cerro San Vicente. On this slide, you can see a burnisher made with a, a big tibia in the corner, uh, left corner of the, of the presentation. Uh, and also a broken fragment of pottery reused as a palette to contain the colors used to draw pottery decorative motifs. The analysis of the modeling traces of these potteries also show a curious fact. 
approximately the 90% of pottery containers are made from the application of coiling, but only, only the 10% are raised using the molding technique associated with pottery from archaeological context of the southwest and northeast of the Iberian Peninsula. All these potteries have optimal degrees of technical expertise and have been made with local clays. In such case, we can uh, say, you know, we could suggest better the idea that women potters with two different technical traditions live at the same time on Cerro de San Vicente. So, did the woman who mold the pottery pieces found in Cerro San Vicente born and grew up in other areas and later travel to that settlement to live their adulthood? This is the question that we have to, to, to answer. With the evidence that we have right now uh, on the table, it could be possible. Well, because we, uh, we it's the last presentation, and and I want to, I don't want to, to speak uh, so much, no, because I suppose that you are very, very tired. We are going to sum up, and uh, I would like to say uh, some final remarks. The pottery sets uh, are full of social meaning, such as the structure and spaces in which they were made and used. Social technology, and of course, the anthropology of techniques and the concept of chain operatoire, they are uh, very useful tools for making alternative archaeological interpretation about Iron Age gender identities. The life, of course, in the Iron Age was totally different from that we have today, from that we have not to export you know, the economical view that we have now uh, in the present you know, to, to the past. We still know very little about the people who live during the Iron Age, we have to, to, to be in mind that, no? and this need to continue investigating and carrying out of social archaeology. That uh, the, the, the archaeology is not uh, archaeology without a social uh, mind and, and with social perspective. And for, for, uh, of course, we have to be aware of our limitation. The loss of archaeological record, as we can see no? in, in other presentations, uh, makes problems for doing technological relationship of synchrony and diachrony to establish change and continuities. And for ending, to put in practice these studies, these technological studies and uh, apply no, for uh, the, the study of gender in, in the past, uh, requires exhaustive knowledge of the production process. So we have to, to, to study very, uh, a lot, no? and it's a, a hard work. And they are under variability, as well as the physical traces that they leave when they leave them, no? because not, uh, Always, no. We have the, the traces that um, are useful for for, for us, no, for uh, for our uh, interpret uh, our um, our interpretation and, and to do uh, some some question, no, and, and and to to answer, no, the the question that we have when we see the uh, pottery uh, remains. So, thank you very much. <laughs>